In this screencast, you're going to see how you can implement the newly created Regions API. Uh, now, Regions is a project that I've written for Elms uh, so that we can define regions that are not theme specific. So uh, my use case in Elms is I have this top bar here, right? And I'm actually borrowing pretty heavily from concepts developed in a module called App Bar, uh, but kind of gutted it so that it's just a very lightweight framework. Um, so I have, you know, typical Drupal theme here, uh, but I have more interfacey types of things that kind of go beyond what a traditional site would have. Um, so I have, you know, this area over here off to the right. Um, I have this top region. I'm going to have, you know, a left side region for some administrative tools. Um, a use case for regions is uh, you have a feature that you want to bundle and give to people. So in my case, it would be bundling and, and uh, giving people this. Uh, so another reason to use this is it's cross theme compatible. So say you have a, a widget that is a feedback widget and you always want it to appear, um, you know, in your company's websites, you could create a feature that implements this, uh, this hook that I've created. Uh, it's like one line. I'll show you how to use it in a second here. Um, and then package that as a feature. And now you have this little contact widget that will work across any theme in your organization as long as this module is turned on. So let's see how we go about actually implementing regions. So I've created, I've kind of abstracted my original code. So we have regions and then we have the uh, Elms nav right. So Elms nav right is how you see what is over here. So with the reactions and this type of thing. So that's Elms nav right. But this regions API is purely the, I mean, there's kind of an invisible region here, if you will, um, which allows you to drop blocks into it. So the way you define a region and you see it's, pretty simple hook is you say what the, the machine name of the region is, the project that it's coming from. So this would be the module that you put it in. Uh, and then if there's any CSS or JavaScript associated to it, you can include that there. Um, it's important to note that by itself regions doesn't do anything. Uh, so if I go into the regions module and we'll scroll all the way to the bottom, this list right here is what is actually going to generate new regions for usage in Drupal. Um, you'll see I just have regions module invoke all. So that's going to pull from other projects that have defined regions. So let's see how we actually go about implementing this in the Elms nav write module. Um, you'll see actually the copyright statement is longer than the module. So this is all you have to do. Uh, to get a region into Drupal using the regions API. So you'll see I have, in my case, I, I like to name all this stuff specific. So for development purposes, I can quickly look through and see what, you know, make sure these files are being included correctly and in the right order. Uh, so I just name everything Elms nav right. So the region name in the system is Elms nav right. Project is part of Elms nav right because it's the Elms nav right module, uh, JavaScript and CSS. Now you can reference these, you know, say these JavaScript and CSS files were in folders, you would reference them uh, as so. So no slash in front of it, it'll add its own slash when it's adding these in. So that's all you have to do to implement this hook. Um, this will basically allow you to throw blocks into a, you know, an area of the site that has absolutely no context to it whatsoever. <laughs> so um, you still need to write CSS and the JavaScript. Uh, so you'll be, you can get the Elms nav write module at uh, drupal.psu.edu slash F server. Um, but basically you're reserving the namespace through this, the creation of this region. And that way you can package this code and see, I mean, I only have basically three files here or four files, the info file to say it's a module, this very minimal function. And then uh, JavaScript as to, you know, how to open and collapse things as well as what colors these should be, things like that. Uh, so there's an area that's been placed in for, you know, this collapse toggle because collapsing and expanding is very common to do with these types of areas. Uh, but in the next little segment here, I'm going to actually, we're going to create an Elms nav left because I have to do that next anyway. 